Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Leah Fronte. And I'm Allie Jeter, and here's your news now. Cabrini College is one of the few colleges lowering its tuition for the next school year. Danielle sat down with Pete Schuster to get the inside scoop on why the college decided to cut its tuition. Well, thank you for having the time to speak with us about the tuition. No problem at all. My first question would be, um, just tell me a little bit about the facts and the specifics of the tuition rates. Sure. Um, well, starting next fall, uh, Cabrini, um, after m many months of research uh, on reducing tuition and, and what that meant to an institution, uh, we're proud to say we're going to be lowering the tuition and fees to $29,000. Um, which is about a $4,176 decrease from, from this previous fall. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, a couple more points to go along with that. Um, a lot of schools have reduced tuition, but uh, we've gone a couple steps farther, I'd like to say. Um, we're actually going to be keeping the tuition and fees below $30,000 uh, for the next four years. So families um, of prospective students and current students will... Uh, basically be able to um, plan for college costs over the next four years, which is something a lot of schools can't say they can, they can offer their students. Um, and one last uh, bit, which I think is a very important, especially for the current students at Cabrini, is that we are um, going to maintain all merit award levels uh, for current students here, even though we're reducing the tuition. So the academic award that students were awarded upon acceptance at the institution uh, will remain the same, um, even though there's that $4,000 um, reduction. So that's pretty, it's pretty exciting. Uh, not only is it good for the incoming class, but the, the current class, that, the current students that are here at Cabrini are going to be able to benefit from that. And can you tell me a little bit about the reaction of the community, both sure. the prospective students and families and the current students and the alumni? Absolutely. Um, Current students, and more specifically seniors such as yourself, um, their reaction has been a little bit different. Um, I think uh, in, in some of my conversations with the seniors that I work with here in the admissions office, uh, more specifically in the ambassador program, is that um, it's unfortunate that they can't benefit from this particular decision, but they understand that it's for the greater good of the institution and, and moving forward for the future classes that and future uh, student body and, and um, community itself, that it really is a positive uh, thing that, that is going to help the school in, in years to come. As soon as you enroll at Cabrini and matriculate, you're part of the community. Um, as, as a student, you're part of the community. As an alumni, you're still part of that community. So um, it's, it's certainly a positive thing, I think. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that you know, when, when my, my mom or my sister reads that article um, about Cabrini reducing its tuition, then I can say I'm a part of that community, whether it's an alumni, a staff member, a current student, or a graduate student. So it's some, some pretty exciting things going on here. So. Cabrini students and faculty hosted an event for young Norristown students showing them the college experience and the basics of basketball. Let's check in with Corey to learn more. The kids are all lined up and ready to slam, jam, and hoop it up. Here we are with all the kids from Norristown. How excited are you guys to be here? Woo! How excited are you? <laughs> excited. So excited? Are you excited? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, there you have it. Cabrini students and faculty taught the young Norristown students some basketball moves and individually helped them on their jump shot. Here we have Lindsay DeBrenner and she's hosting this program and can you tell us a little about what's going on here? Sure. Um, this is our Beyond Basketball program. The SIFE team actually started this. Um, we have about 56 students from Stewart Middle School here on campus today. They're interacting with our basketball players, um, other students, some cheerleaders, and they're just having a good time right now playing basketball. Here we have sophomore John Miller teaching these kids how to ball handle. How do you feel given the opportunity to teach these kids how to play? It feels good. Um, it's early in the morning and these kids are learning how to handle the ball. Um, I feel like I'm helping out the uh, youth here at Cabrini, and I'm just ha ha happy to be a, a part of this organization. As you can see, the hard work paid off and these oh, young yeah. ballers couldn't miss a shot. 
Seventy years ago, the United States was provoked by Japan with the attacks on Pearl Harbor, forcing America into World War II. We caught up with Ed Buffman, World War II vet, who was on the USSS Missouri at the time Japan surrendered to America. Let's take a closer look. I was laying in uh, bed, just a kid, and I thought, boy, my father's in the service. They had already brought him back after retirement, and he was a chief warrant officer. This is what they brought him back as. He later on moved up. But I thought, I've got to sign up for the Navy. That brought us into 1943, and that's when I was called to active duty. Uh, I've been through Pearl Harbor uh, a number of times. When you go out there, it's quiet. You have to go out there on a, uh, we call it a liberty boat, but it would be uh, a little ferry. They take you out to the uh, monument. And when you're there, uh, you look over the side and you see bubbles coming up. They're oil bubbles coming up. And uh, we call those the tears of the sailors that are still down there, still entombed in the Arizona. Pearl Harbor is where the war started. You look across at the Missouri, and that's where the war ended, on the battleship Missouri on September 2nd, 1945. The Chili's restaurant that burned to the ground in late August is going to rebuild early next year. The building will be identical to the original restaurant footprint. Construction will begin as soon as the permits are approved by Radnor Township. The Chili's is expected to reopen next June. And that was your trip around the block, and now let's go across the nation with Leah. You may have thought diamonds are forever, but there is something else to add to that list. Your tweets. The Library of Congress and Twitter have signed an agreement to archive every public tweet ever sent. The partnership with Twitter comes in the midst of a renewed push for federal agencies to archive their own social media postings and emails. The Federal Drug Administration is considering easier access to Plan B, an emergency medication to prevent pregnancy. Current regulations state that you must be over the age of 17 and have a prescription. But if the new regulations go into effect, anyone could walk into a store and buy it right off the shelf between the condoms and the pregnancy test. Republican presidential nominee Herman Cain has dropped out of the race due to allegations of an extra martial affair and several sexual harassment claims. The decision came this past weekend that shook the Republican race as the other nominees tried to woo his supporters. He is expected to endorse another candidate later this week. And that was your trip across the nation. Now let's go around the world with Allie. Islamic extremists dominated the elections last week, leaving the Egyptian youth behind. The ultra-conservative Muslim Brotherhood and similar parties won nearly 60% of the vote leaving the youth worried the newly formed constitution will be influenced by rel religious aspects. The liberal Egyptian bloc, who came in with 13%, could try to counterbalance some of the religious elements. Russia's Prime Minister Vladimir Putin's party garnered huge loss in last week's election and even Ahmed charges of fraud. Protests are spreading across Russia as over 200 protests have been arrested in St. Petersburg and in dozens of other cities. Putin is running for his third term, and the elections will be held in March. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's hear from Danielle for your, her final tip of the week. Thanks, Allie. My final tip of the week is going to be simple, and I know you hear it almost every day. With winter break upon us, it is important to now relax. We don't have that long of a break, so it's important to take it one day at a time and enjoy the time off from papers, tests, and whatever else may have stressed you out this semester. Be sure to spend time with family and friends who you may not have gotten to see much during the semester. If you can, go on a short vacation somewhere close by or visit local holiday attractions to really get into the holiday spirit. I hope you enjoyed the semester and I hope you have a wonderful holiday break. Back to you, Allie and Leah. And now let's check in with Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. Thanks, Leah. NASA announced on December 5th that the Kepler Space Telescope has confirmed the world's first discovery of a planet in a habitable zone outside our solar system. The surface on Kepler 22b has an approximate surface temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning that the conditions for life as we know it are right. Such extrasolar planets have the right distance from their star to support liquid water, plus a suitable temperature and atmosphere to support life. Located 600 light years away, Kepler 22b is 2.4 times the size of Earth, 
putting it in a class of extrasolar planets known as super-Earths. Jeff Marcy of the University of California, Berkeley, was quoted as saying that this is a phenomenal discovery in the course of human history. NASA scientists, however, were quick to point out that they don't yet know if life exists on the other alien planets. Microsoft released an update to their Xbox dashboard on December 6th. Heavily based on Windows Phone 7's Metro interface, the new user interface brings your Xbox content up front and center, instead of sorting everything in lists and hidden screens. All of your, con all of your games, videos, music, apps, and even live TV channels are now all accessible with only the sound of your voice. The Kinect sensor now has deeper integration into the Xbox dashboard, where you can now use simple hand gestures and your voice to control your Xbox. With the addition of many new partners providing live television capabilities, the Xbox will now have Microsoft's Bing search engine integrated into the Xbox experience. Although Connect Voice Control is more prominent with this update, you still need to say Xbox before giving a command, meaning that Microsoft still has a way to go before reaching the natural language processing capabilities of Surrey's personal assistant. That's all I have for this semester. Stay plugged in right here for the latest tech news. Now let's check in with Mary Kate for this week's sports update. The child sex scandal at Penn State University had sports fans, students, parents, and faculty rioting for weeks. Now a similar story approached. Prosecutors are investigating allegations of child molestation against former Syracuse assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine. Two men say they were first abused while being ball boys in the 1980s. Davis, now 39, and stepbrother Mike Lang, 45, told ESPN that they were both victims. While players and staff members who have worked with Fine are having a tough time believing the charges, others beg to differ. If any crimes occurred, it happened so long ago that the act of the limitations has expired. Let's take a look to see how Cabrini students feel about the Syracuse and Penn State scandals. Um, I think it's a shame, especially the whole Penn State thing that just came out. It's a shame that this is happening to sports, especially because people like turn to sports for like to get away from like their jobs and stuff and now it, when you think of sports you think of like the Penn State stuff and the Syracuse stuff and it's just a shame that that's happening. I think the Syracuse scandal is really ruining college sports. They got was there for over 30 years and it sucks that such a great coach unless he had to be ruined over a scandal of him doing things with teens on campus. Just like in the Penn State case, Joe Pa's legacy is ruined because he didn't report what was being done on his campus. So I think it sucks how guys who are leading to mess with little kids instead of just finding a wife. That, uh, that Bernie Fine and, you know, Jerry Sandusky at uh, these big colleges are, are um, becoming a problem, and I think it's, it's really ruining sports, and I, I think that uh, the colleges are trying their best to, to make the situation right. And um, it, it's, uh, it was pretty safe to say that, uh, that they needed to be fired and I think, I think that they're doing a good job dealing with the problems that they're having. I feel like I've heard a little bit about the, uh, the Syracuse scandal with the assistant basketball coach, you know, allegedly uh, basically getting in the same kind of trouble that Sandusky did at Penn State. I feel like it's different. Penn State's was on a much, much larger scale. It went back years. There were cover-ups upon cover-ups, and it really, it really took over the entire campus and got, you know, one of the most famous and respected coaches in the country, Joe Paterno, fired, whereas I feel like the Syracuse thing is – it's still up in the air. I'm not completely up to date on it, but I feel like they haven't proven anything. No one's gotten completely, you know, this is, is absolutely true. This is what happened. The assistant coach was uh, removed from office. He was fired because of this. But other than that, I feel like it's been isolated. Like, he, he may or may not have done something terribly wrong, but it hasn't gone up and down, like, all the way to the administration and everything. The cases at the two schools are often compared because they involve long-term coaches in highly successful programs accused by allegations of sexual child abuse. There's a lot more investigation that has to be done, so hopefully the truth will eventually come out. That's all I have for you this week. Now back to Leah and Allie. Now here's Melissa with your entertainment update. An update from last week. Many thought that Adele would end up with the most Grammy nominees, but actually Kanye West did with seven. Adele has six, including Album of the Year, running against Rihanna, Bruno Mars, Lady Gaga, and Foo Fighters. The 2011 Country Awards were this week, and Carrie Underwood has some great and dedicated fans. Since the award show wins are based on fan votes, the platinum selling artist went home with six wins. According to E!, a young model, Lauren Scruggs, had to face facial and shoulder reconstruction due to an accident. She accidentally walked into a propeller while it was still spinning as she was exiting a small plane. 
The FAA continues to investigate, and the model is now in stable condition. In just three episodes of Kim and Courtney Take New York, both sisters have been experiencing relationship issues. But Courtney's must have gotten better since the tapings because she just announced that baby number two is on the way. We all know that Kim's haven't. I'll stay tuned in to watch the drama and find out what went wrong in the failed marriage, will you? The semester is over, but in January, a couple of student organizations are welcoming students back with Psych at Night, hosted by Cat 4, and a dance hosted by WYBF. The student-run radio station just changed their name to Cavalier Radio and is currently working on their overall image. Join in the fun, and you'll be one of the first to check, it, check out their new changes. That's all the entertainment updates I'll be sharing with you. Good luck with finals, and enjoy the holidays. I'm Melissa Webb, now back to Leah and Ali. And that's all we have for you this week. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Leah Ferrante. And I'm Allie Jr. Have a great break, Cabrini, and happy holidays.